there were a ton of people that I saw, maybe not a ton, I'm over-exaggerating, I'm being a whiny baby. There were a decent number of people in the um, Discord and in the comments under my last couple of VODs who are complaining about the quality of my streams lately. Uh, there are some criticisms that I understand, and there are some criticisms that I really, really don't get. In terms of, like, in terms of general, like, presentational style, like, uh, charisma, being funny, stuff like that, I feel like I've only gotten better. Totally subjective, by the way. I know I don't scream as often as I used to, but consider that a gift to my roommates, if nothing else, you know? That's just me being considerate. I feel like, I feel like in those respects, it's, it's, it's been pretty uphill. Um, in terms of, like, the content that I do, it, it varies a lot, you know? I know people miss the debates. Um, I, wa I do want to get back to doing debates, you know? It's just, be difficult to get like the really spicy stuff sometimes it can be tough um especially since i'm like i'm sensitive to like the like crazy grifters who are just like it does not like they don't give a fuck about what they or i say they just want to be on the stream for the attention or notoriety and i don't like that shit you know um i don't i don't want to give those people the the time of day because it's like i'm not doing anything there except for being the platform that they use to get attention um yeah. Yeah, I don't really like the uh, I don't like the group debates either. I, I the, the hippy dippy ended, and I think I don't think that'll affect me that much because I don't think I was going to do stuff like that that much more anyway. Because oh god, this feels like so conceited or whatever. But it's like Republicans are literally laying the groundwork for ending democracy, and then it's like all right, time to talk with a bunch of other people, three of whom are because they had to be found to product to provide the debate. Like three of them are just like arbitrarily evil or have like the objectively wrong take on this. And now get in the four hour Thunderdome where y you do nothing but signal boost their positions for comedic and entertainment value, you know? And, and you're like, and, and the only thing that I feel like when I'm sitting there is like, I'm trying to think of like a good like a good comparison or whatever, but it, it feels like what whatever kind of performative theater it is, it doesn't feel like an appropriate kind. Like if it if if these were on totally like meaningless subjects or stuff that wasn't that like pressing right now, I think it could be more fun. So like for example, the idea of having like a group debate convo but with like some other lefties about like some contentious left debate issues, I think that could be fun because I don't feel like I'm providing a spectacle out of giving attention to them. It feels like like a kind of fucked up like reverse minstrel show where the the group that's suffering is not the group that's being minstrelized, you know? And it's like conservatives are up there with like clown pants and like giant hats or whatever. And they're like dancing and I'm throwing tomatoes. And then I look and then I look back and like the people who are suffering aren't the conservatives. It's it's us. Because conservatives are getting to do what they like to do most, which is wear clown pants and dance while tomatoes get thrown on them, you know? It's, it's, and so like there's no there's no harm. And it's not like it's not like a, a nine person debate is like the avenue for me to provide my best arguments on a subject, you know. That's always going to come from non debates, you know. Um yeah, fuck, I don't know. The one debate we did recently that I that I'm really fond of in retrospect was the um the debate that was with that professor dude who was anti-trans women or whatever. Uh, cuz there was an argument that I got out of that that I've later refined and I feel like the argument is like is like a perfect argument now. I feel like I have it down perfectly, right? You know? Um which argument? The agua when I aguad all over his face. What argument? The trans water? Okay, but it's like a better trans water argument, okay? Here's the argument now, as I understand it, okay? So, transphobes often argue on the idea that woman is like an innate, set-in-stone concept referring to like gametes or something. Because they can't say like, it's, it's when you have like tits or pussy, because you can, you can grow tits or pussy now, you can do magic, you know, whatever. It's, so it's now it's like gametes and chromosomes or whatever, you know, like an innate thing. And then so naturally my argument is like, okay, well, what if there's more social utility to including people who are like Blair White and a woman? Like if you can get people on a very basic like gatekeepy transmedicalist acceptance of women as part of an argument in favor, like that's better than total total like rejection of trans identity, right? Like something, you know, like, okay, so if people who are totally passes a woman 
can be considered a woman, then maybe like, what about here? What about here? And then you get people to the total like arbitrariety of the concept, right? Um, but the argument is this, okay? So the argument is about like the semantic and totally arbitrary and flexible nature of language. And it's about water, okay? Are you ready for it? Okay. So um, imagine, imagine you have, um, you have two people, right? It's me and it's you. The chat is like collectively a person. You're, wow, you're so handsome. Congratulations, okay? And, um, and I'm like, hey, do you want this water bottle? And you don't trust me. So you're like, what's in this water bottle? Why are you giving it to me? And I'm like, oh, it's just water. Don't worry about it. Like smile and hand you the water bottle, okay? And you're like, okay. And you drink the water bottle, all right? Now here's the thing, okay? Here's the trick. I lied to you. It's not just water. Inside that water bottle, are actually several parts per million of trace minerals that get added to every water bottle produced by that company to promote teeth health. You know, there's like a little bit of, of basic mineral additive to maintain proper flavor and, and uh, dental health. Now, jokes aside, if I pointed that out to you, did I lie to you? when I said it was just water? Like, like really, right? If, if, so when I said it's just water, did I lie? In a semantic sense, no. No one in reality would ever say that was a lie. No one would ever say that. I mean, there are people saying yes right now because I'm like playing it up for the sake of the argument, but like in reality, no human would consider that a lie. Like no, nobody's ever like been said, here's a thing, but it's wrong because you didn't give the molecular composition of every atom in it. That's like really dumb, right? So, okay. Imagine the same scenario over again, a uh, second time. Um, you know, I, hand you, I, I hold out the water to you and you're like, uh, what's in it? And I'm like, oh, it's just water. Okay. Um, and you drink it. Um, and I, I did lie to you again. Okay. Um, in that water is several parts per million of cyanide, uh, a lethal amount, actually, and you die. Now, did I lie to you when I said it's just water? Well, now you're dead, so you can't really answer. But now your ghost is there, okay? Your ghost is talking to me now. Did I lie to you when I said it's just water? Everyone would believe yes. Literally everyone. Yeah, you laced it with poison. It's not just water. The question is, why was the latter a lie and the former not? In both cases, the parts per million of non-water was the same. The amount of water per volume of liquid was identical in both cases. Utility, right there. Because it wasn't just whether or not it was water, it was whether it would serve the purpose of water. That's it. When people hear it's just water, they're not actually asking, is it the chemical water in its entirety? They're asking, does it serve the purpose of water? Is it functionally water? Will it do what I expect it to? It's shared communication. You're actually making assumptions on both ends, right? We do this all the time for like a ton of things, right? What flows through rivers? Water does. But like, not really. Water in a river is like 5% sediment, sometimes more. Um, but we still say it's water because when we say it's river water or water flows through the river, you know what the other person means. But here's the other thing. If you were to bottle river water and give it to another person saying it's just water and they drank it and they spat it out because it's river water, you would have lied to them. So it's water in the river, but it's not water in the water bottle, is it? It's dirty water because water in a water bottle is supposed to be clean. So when you say it's water, you're not really saying it's water. You're saying it's water in line with the service expectation and functionality that you would expect of water in a water bottle. This is a linguistic game we do like 24 seven all the time um, without realizing it. It's just like a base, yeah, potable water, but not just potable water, right? There are other changes that you could make to that water that are potable, makes it potable, but there it's, you'd still be like, what the fuck is this? You know, there are other things that you could do. Potable water can have trace amounts of your urine in it, couldn't it? Yeah, it could. There are so many little um, uh, uh, presuppositions that we make when it comes to like what things are. And you can lie while telling the truth, can't you, right? What's that in the river? 
Water. True. What's this in the water bottle? Water. False. This is river water. I think this is remarkably interesting. There are no like firm lines anywhere here. It's just like an abstract language game. Now, with all of this being established, woman refers to gametes and hormones, and that's all it means? Really? So water, a, a, a definitive molecular compound that can be observed in reality is an empirical thing, has a bunch of different definitions depending on its use and value and utility. Water is a, is a, is a, a, mo a molecule. You can test scientifically whether something is water or not. It's not some arbitrary concept like, you know, a woman refers to some things. No, water refers to water. That's what it means. And still, even with water, it can be this like really contextual language game. But with woman, we're just supposed to believe it's like, oh, it's biology and that's that, you know, it's just this, you know. Now, you can't always make this argument directly to a conservative, but you guys, is this not valuable? I, for me personally, I think this understanding this is a phenomenal uh, tool in the, in the understanding how to break these like um, linguisti linguistically prescriptivist conservative arguments. Um, I think, I think that's, it's, it's, it's very powerful. Um, again, like you can't just like sit a conservative down and do like the five minute rant at them. I do think you can do some back and forth though, because you would ask them the questions, ask them, am I lying when I say this is water when it just has the trace minerals? No. Am I lying when I say this is water and it's got cyanide? Yes. Why? And here's the thing. They cannot engage in linguistic prescriptivism without like, while still answering that question. You see? Answering that question, how something can be true or false when describing empirical molecular structures depending entirely on utility, and only being asked whether something is water, they cannot answer that without cracks opening in their argument. Um, yeah, okay, so I'm, I'm, I'm rambling now, but th that's, yeah, I, 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 I've, I thought about this after, um, and I got some helpful emails, and I think, you know, I think that's very... Um, this is a better argument than the aqua one. The thing, the thing that frustrated me about the aqua thing is that he didn't like bite, right? Like, um, language doesn't involve perfect translations from culture to culture. There are like different words that we translate between different cultures can mean different things in subtle and sometimes really obvious ways. So like if the definition for a woman translates into woman for another culture or another time period, but that version of woman has different parameters. Like, how do you say which one is objective and which one isn't, you know? The only point that I was trying to arrive at, which he didn't, like, engage with, because I think he's literally, like, a hardline definitional prescriptivist who doesn't believe words can change, which is insane. Um, but I, 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 he, 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 I wanted to get him on, like, the linguistic ambiguity, like, the language game kind of thing, you know? Um, but that's okay. I, that whole argument, I think, was me, like, tearing his arguments to shreds. Or, like, that whole convo was me tearing his arguments to shreds, I think. So I, I'm, I don't feel bad about that at all. But don't we differentiate between mineral water and distilled water? Yeah, but they're both water, aren't they? And if somebody asked you for water, would they tell you that you did, a, like, something wrong if you brought mineral water or distilled water to the absence of the other? It's all language games. We may be able to define differences between these things, but that doesn't mean there aren't overlapping categories. And so much ambiguity, you know? So much ambiguity. Another example of the ambiguity of language would be that we refer to gold, even if it's um, low carat gold. Uh, so even if a gold is, is like an alloy that is less than 50% gold, people will still call it gold rather than the other component in the alloy, even if it represents more than 50% of the composition of the metal, you know? The only reason gold is what's being referred to there, like 10 karat gold or whatever, um, the only reason it's being called gold there is because we consider gold more valuable than the other thing that's in the alloy. But that's like an arbitrary, because we're usually talking jewelry. So the only, so this isn't like for industrial purposes or whatever. We're saying like, yeah, this is 10 karat gold as opposed to like 14 karat some other thing with gold being the additive because the gold is what we're after. But that's like an arbitrary social preference. Why then do we call it gold? Well, maybe terms refer to arbitrary social preferences and not to fundamental reality. Um, you get me, you get me. 
Water and steam are both water, but water is not steam. Yeah, if a person asks you to get water and you bring ice, pe like, people be like, what the fuck? Why'd you bring me ice? They meant water, but ice is water, obviously, you know? Um, likewise, if someone asks uh, asked you to bring them ice and you brought water, like, it, like it, but, but it's, it, so much of language is not about objective reality. It's about common understandings. Read Wittgenstein. I swear to God, this dude was on the ball for like everything. Language is about a, a communication game that people play with each other where we have shared understandings of culture and like um, underst like shared understandings of culture and environmental context. And we use that to implicitly, quietly agree on things that are loaded presuppositionally in the terms we use to describe them. Where does a river begin or end? Well, you know what? I have no fucking idea. How long is the US coastline? Can it, is it, is it two, like the West coastline? Is it 1200 miles? If you just draw a line on a map, what if you trace a line across every single grain of sand that is above the water line? You could get hundreds of thousands of miles. Which one is the correct one? It's literally not possible to tell. If you wanted to, you could break it down to a, the molecular structure of the grains of sand that are just above the water line, and it would be changing by millions of miles every second. You know, it would be just totally, it would be like a, like a 27 digit counter that changes so quickly you can never see any of the numbers on it like it's totally out there um there's just no way to know